All right, so where we left off, we have our player, uh, when they walk into their enemy, enemy is gonna come after them. And we added a state machine so that we can knock back the enemy and have it trace the enemy's current state. So for example, if it's in walk, if it's in uh, idle, if it's in stagger, attack, and so on and so forth. So uh, today what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it so that our player can't just walk into our enemy like this without themselves being knocked back. So let's get started. Uh, first thing I want to do is go to my player here. And I don't know why I put the knockback script on the player themselves when I should have put it on the actual hitboxes. So I'm going to copy this component off of the player. I'm going to paste it onto the hitboxes. To do that, uh, I'm going to go to my knockback script on my player object. I'm going to hit the gear. I'm going to copy this component. And then I'm going to remove the component. Then I'm going to go to my hitboxes and I'm going to paste component as new. Now you'll notice that we also have a player hit script here. I don't know why I made two of these. I made a player hit and knockback that have most of the same functionality. Just one is for the pot and one is for the enemy. So I'm going to remove the player hit script. We're going to move its functionality onto the player. Next thing I want to do is I want to define an actual hurt box for the player. So right now the player has a box box collider 2d which is being used for collision i'm going to add another one that i'm going to use for um, for determining hits so this one is going to be a little bit smaller than our player so i added a box collider 2d edit collider i'm going to make this about like that and then over here so you want to make it a little bit smaller than your player so that your game feels more fair uh, for your people who are playing it if you have it the exact size of your player, it's going to seem unfair, despite the fact that it won't be. Uh, and then for your enemy, we're going to do the same thing. Um, pretend you didn't see that. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a box collider 2D. And this one we're going to make about the size of the enemy, maybe even a little bit bigger. Uh, it's always good to err on the side of your player as far as things like this go. So there we go. There we go. And I'm just going to leave the collision one alone. The other thing I want to make sure I do is mark both of these as triggers so that they don't interfere with collisions. So they're both triggers. All right, cool. Now let's get into the programming here. So we're going to open up two scripts. One is player hit and the other is the knockback script. So in player hit, I want to find my on trigger enter 2D. And I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to go into my knockback script. And where we're already doing on trigger enter 2D, I'm just going to add that, um, that bit of code that I just copied. I need to change this from other.compare tag to other.gameobject. Compare tag. And then I'm going to save my script. And let's make sure this still works. So if I go back into Unity and hit play. Um, I should still be able to break the pot. And I should still be able to knock the enemy back. Cool. So I haven't changed any functionality yet. Now, what I want to happen is I want when the player overlaps the enemy for the enemy to knock the player back. So to do that, I'm going to go to my log and I'm going to add a knockback script to it. But in order for this to work, we're going to have to do a few more things to the code to make sure that we, we can use that same script for both the player and the enemy. I'm going to give a relatively low thrust, say 2, and I'm going to leave the knockback time at 0.2 seconds. Uh, I'm going to go back into my knockback script. So, uh, so if other.gameobject.compare tag enemy, I'm going to say... Uh, if it's enemy or if it's player. So, or other.gameobject.compare tag, and the tag for the player is going to be capital P player. I believe I've already used that, but let's make sure. So in Unity, player, and the tag for the player is capital P player. So, cool. So, we're going to do I'm going to call this instead of enemy, I'm going to call it um, 
hit. So it's the object that we're hitting. And then hit. So we're going to check to see if it's a rigid body. This works for both the enemy and the player. Uh, if hit isn't null, we're going to say... We're going to work. come back to that in just a second. Uh, this is going to be hit. And this is going to be hit. And this is going to be hit. And then I'm going to get rid of that debug statement that may or may not have been added on camera. Um, okay, cool. So most of this code applies to both the player and the enemy. So this one only applies to the enemy. Um, this applies to both. This applies to both. This applies to both. And then this start coroutine can apply to both as well. So what I want to do is I want to uh, have it split at this point and then have some of these things happen for the enemy and some of them happen for the player. So if hit isn't null, I'm going to now check the tag. So if uh, other dot game object dot compare tag enemy. So if it's the enemy, I'm going to put it into the stagger state. So I'm going to cut that, paste it here, and I don't need to do any of this differently. So otherwise, like for both of them, it's going to do this. Now in my uh, not coroutine, I'm going to actually move this from where it currently is. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to move it into um, the enemy script itself because I'm going to have a knockback on all of my enemies. So in the enemy script, I'm get rid of my start and my update methods. I'm going to paste that I enumerator. And this is going to require two arguments. One, I'm going to call this rigid body 2D. Uh, I'm going to call it, say, my rigid body, and then a float, which is knock time. So instead of this being enemy, it's my rigid body. Instead of this being velocity, or sort of, instead of it being enemy, it's my rigid body. And then this is my rigid body. And I don't actually need to do this get component stuff because the current state is already here. Um, okay, cool. So that's the enemy version of it. Now I'm going to uh, make a small method that's going to call that coroutine. This is going to be a public um, void knock. And this is going to require those two arguments as well. So rigid body 2D, my rigid body, and then float knock time. And then the only thing this is going to do is start that coroutine. Start coroutine, knock co, and I'm going to pass in my rigid body and knock time. All right, so what I want to do here is in my knockback script, instead of starting this coroutine, I'm going to, if the other is enemy, uh, call that on the enemy. So I'm going to say uh, other dot get component enemy dot knock. And I'm going to pass in um, other and knock time so that, oh, it needs to be the rigid body. And I call the rigid body hit. There we go. Um, so I'm letting that object monitor its own knockback instead of being monitored by something else. So I'm going to save that. Um, oh, yeah. And then I don't want it to get staggered again if it's already staggered. So in enemy, I'm going to say if my rigid body isn't null and um, current state is not equal to enemy state dot stagger 
so that we're not staggering something that's already staggered and like multiplying the forces on them. Um, all right, cool. Now we're going to do something similar for the uh, for the player. So I'm going to put this in the movement coroutine because that's where the state machine is. Here, I'm going to add a new state, which is stagger. And do, 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 do. current state is not attack. And let me put this on another line so it's easier to read. Um, current state is not uh, player state dot stagger. So if we're not staggered, then we can attack. Uh, and then if we're in walk, then we can do that. Okay. That seems right. And now I'm going to add that uh, not coroutine. This isn't going to be enemy anymore. It's going to be my rigid body. And uh, it's going to have float knock time. So my rigid body and I actually don't need to do this as an argument at all because my rigid body is already something that's determined in here and then uh, I'm going to change my current state to player state dot idle did I not call it idle? Oh, I guess I don't have a, an idle state. So I'll add that. All right, cool. And now I need something to start that coroutine. So I'm going to do public void knock. And then this is only going to take in a time. So float knock time, and then start coroutine. I feel like I'm going through this really, really fast. Knock co knock time. All right. So the whole point of that is that we're not doing this coroutine in the knockback anymore. Instead, we're letting each object determine its own knockback on its own. So um, rather than knock something back um, through the player and having to have the player keep track of how much something else is knocked back, each object is going to keep track of itself, which makes more sense. Um, and then I need to invoke it in the player. So if other dot game object dot compare tag player. And then we're going to set its current state. So we're going to do hit dot get component. And we want to get the player movement component. We want to set the current state to player state dot stagger. And then we want to initiate the knockback. So uh, we'll do other dot get component player movement dot knock. And we'll send in the knock time. Okay. And it also seems right for me to do that after I've done all the physics stuff. So I'm going to grab those three lines and put them first. So, all right, that's a lot of coding without testing anything. I almost certainly broke something. So um, let's just trace ourselves here. So the knockback, which is on everything that's going to knock something else back or do something. Um, we have a trigger enter 2D. If it's a breakable thing, we're going to do this. Um, if it's a enemy or a player, we're going to get the rigid body. If the rigid body isn't null, we're going to calculate the difference. 
um, we're going to multiply the difference by the thrust. We're going to add force to that object. If it's an enemy, we're going to put its state into stagger and then start their um, knockback coroutine on themselves. If it's a player, we're going to set their state to stagger and then start the player's knockback thingy thing on itself. So let's save this and let's see how much I broke. Not what I broke. <laughs> how much I broke. All right, so, doo -doo -doo. all right, so let's, that still works. Holy cow. All right, well, that was a heck of a lot of thrust. I wonder if that's because the player has way too much thrust on their knockback. Let's check here. Let's make this like two. Um, and then let's also look at the log to make sure it's initiating its, st oh, that's what I need to do. Okay, cool. So, um, in my enemy, when my knock coroutine is over, after I set the state to idle, I'm also going to set the rigid body dot velocity to vector 2.0. I'm going to do the same thing to my player here. So player movement, my rigid body dot velocity equals vector two dot zero. Okay, I think that was it. Let's uh, let's give this a try. So if I hit play, okay, sweet. So if I go. like floating. All right, what happens if I look at my log here? He's still in the stagger state. How long do I have stagger set for? 0.2? That means that enemy. Hmm. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay. Okay. Hold on, I'll be right back. All right, I'm not going to lie. I'm actually surprised I didn't break more than I did. Uh, the first problem, which I didn't even show you, if our player walks into our enemy, I am stuck and cannot control. The second problem is if our player hits our enemy, they're stuck infinitely uh, being staggered. And since they are essentially like, you know, like a puck on an air hockey table they're just going to go forever until they hit something so let's fix these two problems uh, the first one's really easy if we go into our player movement script the reason i wasn't able to walk is because i reset the state to idle but i didn't check for state idle so in our uh, update method here uh, where we check if player state is walk we're gonna add or current state is equal to player state dot idle. So that's gonna fix the first issue. And then if I go into my uh, enemy script, uh, I want to remove the check to see if the current state is stagger because um, it was only going into here if the current state was not stagger. So since I changed the state to stagger, it was never being changed back to idle. So I'm going to save this, go into Unity here, uh, and let's give this a try. So, all right. Um, yeah, OK, cool. So we're going to walk over. So our enemy is giving our player just a teeny tiny tap just to knock him back. Um, it's probably too low. Uh, let's try like four. I'm a big fan of doubling stuff if you don't like it. That's better. And then there's our little tap to our to our enemy. We're not giving them too much force like we were at the beginning. So and then we can still get out of their range. They'll go back to sleep. We can still break pots. Oh hey. That pot broke right when we walked over it. 
let's make a really, really, really quick change here. Um, so in our knockback script, we're going to say if other.gameObject.compare tag is breakable. We only want this to happen if the player is actually attacking it. Because um, right now it's being applied to the player's thingy thing. Um, let's say, uh, and well, first let's make sure it wasn't the enemy that broke it. So let's say, and this dot game object dot tag. Oh, we want to do compare tag. Um, player. So we only want it to be the player. Let's test that really quickly here. That was something I didn't even think of. I'm glad I checked that. All right, so I'm going to walk over with the player. And since the knockback script isn't on the player, it shouldn't, yeah, it wasn't the player that was the issue. It was the enemy. So come on, come with me. Come on over here. Come on. All right, so let's, okay, cool. So it was the enemy that broke the pot last time. Uh, but we're not breaking the pot now. Because the hitboxes aren't tagged as player. So let's tag our hitboxes as player. And let's fix that really, really fast. This video is going longer than I thought it would. I'll post a link to where the code is at uh, so you guys can check if you want to. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments down below. You can follow me on Twitter to find out when I post a new video. Uh, you can join me on Discord where I'm chatting pretty much every day. In fact, if you want to get a hold of me, Discord's probably the best place. Um, so yeah, have yourself a wonderful day.